Diwali is a time to be shared with your family, and acclaimed Bharatanatyam dancer Varushka Patha blocked out this time in her busy travel schedule to make sure that she'd be home for the festival of lights. Varushka celebrates Diwali in a very traditional way, and she invited us to share the experience. Varushka Patha was just 19 when, having received a fellowship from the Indian Council for Cultural Relations in New Delhi, she first travelled to India to study Bharatanatyam dance as a disciple of the Dhanajayans. She has since gone on to earn international acclaim as a performer, choreographer and teacher and has been the creative director of original works inspired by the Srimad Bhagavatam and the Bhagavad Gita. On a personal level, spirituality plays a very significant role in her life and she makes a particular effort to celebrate festivals such as Diwali with her family. This gives her an opportunity to observe traditional customs such as creating a Rangoli design at the threshold to the family home. Hello, Varushka. How are you? Hi, Madhushan. I'm well. How are you? Welcome to Mela. Thank you so much for inviting us into your home today. Oh, it's wonderful to have you here, Madhushan. It's a special day also. You have a beautiful Rangoli pattern. Tell me about it. A Rangoli is something very special that we do on auspicious days. This is a very simple one, but usually it's very elaborate with colors and different lamps and ornaments. So on this special day, we are also so happy to have you in our home. So please welcome into our home. Thank you. Varishka's cultural and spiritual roots run deep, as can be seen throughout her home. India has played an important part in shaping your career. What other artifacts do you have at home? I have lots of artifacts, small things and big things, but the ones that are very special is that I keep the sand of holy places in my home. So I have a bit of Vrindavan, a bit of Madurai Meenakshi, of Chidambaram, Tanjavur, uh, special things, but um, I've got lots to show you. I can't wait to see it. Wow, this is an interesting collage and I recognize some of the faces here. This is my special wall of fame, a project that I've started, just tracing back all the legends of music, um, people that I love, people that I've met, and people that I've made an integral contribution to classical music in today's world. I noticed you have musical instruments on the wall and I saw some behind me as well. This is a very old traditional veena that has been played by my mom-in-law. She lived in Delhi for some time uh, in an ashram and place. Omrutangam is a treasure of one of the legends in India, Karaikudi Manisa. And then these are the tablas that my husband used when he was five years old. Something smells amazing. What's cooking? I have something special for you, all my preparations for Diwali. So let's go into my kitchen. So this is my kitchen. Have a seat, Madhushan. My family loves vegetable biryani and vegetable pulao. So first we're going to add our ghee to our pot. So here we have our spices and I'm going to go with some nice red chilies first, some bay leaves, some cardamom, just a few pods will be good. So star aniseed that gives our pulao lovely aroma. And we're going to add some cinnamon. So I've just done our big spices. I'm going to go with our basic spice, adding in some fresh jeera, mustard seeds, and uradal. A little bit of cloves. And let's just allow that to sizzle a bit. I'm going to add in the premix of uh, plain yogurt, dania, and mint into our biryani now. Now I'm going to add in our masala for the plow. We add a little bit of turmeric, some masala, and you can decide if your masala is very hot. I'm going to add some fresh jeera and dania powder. You can smell it's already creating a lovely flavor. I'm going to add in some fresh ginger and garlic into the biryani. I'm just going to cut it up so that it's easier to chop. I always love to use fresh garlic and fresh ginger in my meals and it, it definitely creates a different aroma to a pilau and many other dishes that we prepare. 
and it goes into the mixture. I'm just going to lightly just mix this in, let it blend with the masala. We're just going to leave this on for just two minutes. It's now time for me to add the potatoes. We all love potatoes. <laughs> We're going to add in the salt. About a teaspoon is good. We're going to leave this to cook for just maybe about five minutes. These are soft cooking potatoes, so we don't want it too soft. So while we're just waiting for the potatoes, let me just go through and prepare our raita in the meantime. I've already done some tomatoes, cucumber and red onion. We're just going to mix up these and then add in our yogurt. If you think your mixture's a bit too thick or the yogurt's too thick, I add in some water just to lighten the consistency of it. Some salt and then some jeera powder. We're going to add in our brinjal, just sprinkle it in. Give us just a light mix. Add in the rest of our vegetables, which is uh, fresh carrots and green beans. And we'll just let that steam for a minute. So we're almost done and we're just going to add in our rice that I've already boiled and I've just kept in my warmer. I do not boil my rice with turmeric and color it entirely. I have colored it slightly and I like it more natural so I get to see my vegetables. We're going to just add it in, just drop it in lightly. The rice has been parboiled and it's going to steam off with the vegetables. I'm just going to add in my paneer now. There's blocks. We're going to do a light stir. We allow this to rest and just let the rice steam in with the vegetables. I'm just going to finish up our raita. We just add it into our bowl. An old-fashioned traditional favorite is uh, pomegranate seeds. This is an old-fashioned traditional way of doing raita from Chennai. We're going to sprinkle on some jeera powder. And just a little bit of coriander. Just break it off. Here we go. Doing this lightly. And I think we're good to go. This looks delicious. But I know you have something else planned. Today I'm making a very famous barfi. It's my best friend's recipe and it's now become my trademark secret and it's a 20 minute barfi. We're going to start with the preparation of the syrup first. We add in our two cups of icing sugar. This is half a cup of water. Two tablespoons of clarified butter and just a little bit of rose essence. We're going to put this on the stove and bring it up to a boil. So while our syrup is boiling up, we add in our 220 ml of fresh cream into the milk powder. And I like to do it the traditional way. You just get your fingers in. So just moving your bowl around. That's ready. Our syrup is now ready and it's time to add in the cardamom powder to it. And now our syrup is ready. Just add in our milk powder. It's been lightly mixed with fresh cream. It's best with a wooden spoon just to, it's easier to get out all the lumps and it allows you to have a smooth mixture. We've given it a good stir, all the lumps are out and you just need to let it rest for about five minutes. It will take me five minutes to get my sari on. 
Hi. You look beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much, Madhush. And I see you've gotten your hands into the well, barfi. I've tried. <laughs> so this is, it's complete now. I can see it. And we're going to just lay it out into our platter. I've already done one layer. We're creating the effect of a pistachio barfi. I've done one layer in green and this is our top layer now. Wow, that does look amazing. Once you cut into it, you'll see the beautiful colors of the layers. We're going to just add in our pistachio nuts. Presenting a tulsi or basil plant together with sweetmeats is another Diwali tradition of long standing. This is our special Tulsi Maharani and I wish she brings you an abundance of joy and lots of good luck with your journey. Thank you very much Virushka, I appreciate it. With all the preparations complete, the family could enjoy some special time together. Having fun while evoking the universal message of knowledge and good, lighting up the world and banishing the powers of ignorance and darkness. International tours are a regular part of Varushka's career and recently she was invited to perform at the Tirupati Temple in Tamil Nadu. This shows the high esteem in which she is held, but for Varushka, dance is her way of expressing gratitude to the Divine. <laughs>